Hello and thanks for joining me. Well, some of you may remember, I did a video a while back, quite a while actually, uh, about building this wood lathe. And this is a wood lathe with a carriage and a cross lathe. And I could make mechanical wood parts with it uh, and duplicate spindles or whatever, but uh, I had a tracer attachment on it. It didn't really work very good. Uh, but I've always had this dream of making it CNC. Well, I got a friend in Knoxville, Tennessee. He's got a channel called uh, Knox Machining. And uh, he's, a, uh, he's really good at CNC, and I am not. So he's making me a CNC setup for this lathe. And I've got a steep learning curve in front of me. I, I know a little CAD, but I don't know anything about CNC. But I'm in the process of taking this lathe apart. And uh, I've redone some of the cross slide and, and uh, carriage to make them run real smooth. And I'm, right now I'm putting a new lead screw on it. It had a 3 8 standard thread lead screw. I've got a, a cross slide lead screw ordered for it. But the carriage lead screw, I'm just going to use a, a half 12 standard threaded rod. But I thought 3 8 was a little wimpy. Uh, and it had a wiggle to it. And this one's nice and straight. So that's what I'm doing right now. Plus I'm going to make a, a NEMA uh, encoder not encoder, stepper motor mount out here. So that's what I'm doing now. Let me show you this lead screw. Here's my lead screw and here's the new nut I made. Uh, kind of like a uh, half nut except it doesn't disengage. That's what I had in there and I made a bigger one. This one had a tendency of moving like that and uh, so it would develop slop in there and threads were kind of worn. Uh, Plus it's 3 8 and I went up to half inch. Out here I need to make a plate uh, with the NEMA 23 uh, stepper motor bracket holes uh, or mount, mounting holes. Anyway, that's what I'm doing over on the mill. Let's go take a look on the mill. I'm going to drill that hole pattern in here. I've milled the end of it and located that at these two sides on my DRO. And there's a pattern I got to drill. Well, now I've got to raise the mill head and put a drill chuck in there. And here's where my round column mill fix comes in. Okay, I've got some existing holes here. These bolts are. And I gotta mount that right there on the end of that lead screw. I gotta turn down the end of the lead screw. So I need two slots in here to make that appropriately adjustable for where the lead screw position is. Looks like it fits. That's always good. This is going to be a coupler to my lead screw. I was going to turn down the end of the lead screw and it was flopping around on the end of my, on the outer, out, outboard side of my lathe and I thought, well, I'll just make a coupler. 
Well, let's see how true this runs when I screw this on here. Oh, that's pretty good. I'll probably lock that, lock tight that to the end of my lead screw. I guess I could pin it. Probably needs to be pinned. Yeah, let's see what I got in the mail here. Yeah, that's my cross slide lead screw. It was supposed to be single start, and it's one, two, three, four. Or start. That is one fast moving cross slide. Ah, got it. Okay. There's my couplers. Cool. That's for my stepper motor to the lead screws. Still moving freight. Okay, I had the cross slide with this bolted to the bottom. Like that. And it went into that nut right there. And I'm going to move that nut right there. And the reason I'm going to do that is because this adjustment moved with the cross slide. And if I'm going to make it CNC, I would just assume that servo didn't move. I was going to put the servo back here, but I don't want the servo to move in and out with the cross slide. So I've got to put that nut in the center of that.
I like it. I think it'll work. I messed up, cut, uh, drilled two holes in the wrong place there. I think I got it right now. That's the uh, plate for the stepper motor. Okay, I'm turning down the th end of this threaded rod. I need to make this quarter inch. Ah, went too far. Slightly over. Half thousand over a quarter inch. Okay, I need to turn this down to five sixteenths, which will leave part of the threads, but it'll be all right. Okay, I've got to come up with some kind of limit switch here. I'm thinking about putting a little tab underneath my cross slide. Mounting that switch right there and letting that tab hit it. Like that. So I need some kind of angle iron bracket in there. That I can mount my switch to. I accidentally drilled that hole, but I, I think that was for a reason. Now my stop wire will run with the uh, servo wire, servo power wire. I like it. That's got it. Yeah, the last thing to do is put this emergency stop on. It's going to stop both the uh, light motor and the uh, controllers.
All right, let's see if it works. Probably should have some kind of magnetic switch on that. Well, that about wraps up part one. Uh, basically, all I did in part one here is uh, made the stepper mounts, put in some flex couplings, some thrust bearings, made everything real smooth, a couple of limit switches. Uh, there's the thrust bearings there. Flex coupler and another, another uh, stepper mount. Hopefully they all fit. Uh, also put in a stop safe. That will stop both the lathe and the stepper motors. Uh, I probably need to put in a magnetic switch because when I release that, if the switch is on, the lathe starts up and that's really not how it's supposed to work. But anyway, right now we're just waiting on the uh, servos and computer, uh, all the electronics that Billy's making me. And I'm really looking forward to it. One big step for me will be learning some CAM and G-code to make this thing work. I'm pretty good with the mechanical part, but computers and electronics, I'm a little weak on that. But I'm sure I'll get it. I'm going to make it work. Uh, stay tuned for part two, and uh, thanks for joining me, and be sure and subscribe.